In this chapter, we'll cover the basics of MIDI recording. We'll continue to work on the original song, Gonna Get You. So far, we've recorded a guitar part and vocal. Now it's time to add drums and a piano part using MIDI and VST instruments. Let's begin with a basic review of MIDI and how it works. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a computer language that allows musical instruments to talk to each other. MIDI was originally developed in the early 80s and is still in use nearly 30 years later. That is remarkable longevity in the world of computers, and it's a testimony to how well MIDI works. Recording MIDI is fundamentally different from recording audio. For one thing, no sound is recorded, only instructions. The most basic MIDI commands are note on and note off. A MIDI file has a lot in common with an old player piano scroll. So much so that even today, most MIDI editors refer to their user interface as a piano roll. When you press the key of a piano, actual sound is generated. By comparison, when you press the key of a MIDI keyboard, all that comes out is a note on command. And when you release the key, the keyboard transmits a note off command. This means that you need two components to make music using MIDI. You need a controller or an input device to generate the commands, and then you need a sound module or tone generator to generate the actual sounds. Cubase comes with a powerful arsenal of these sound modules called VST instruments. You can use any MIDI controller to trigger them. For this video, we'll use a traditional keyboard as our MIDI controller. Let's look at an example. Let's begin by selecting some VST instruments. Open the Devices menu and select VST Instruments. The window that opens simulates an empty equipment rack. Click in one of the rack slots to display all the available VST instruments. Let's select our dedicated drum synthesizer, Groove Agent 1, as our first instrument. Cubase will ask us if we want to create an associated MIDI track. Now normally it would be easiest to just click Create, but let's click Cancel so that we can walk through the process manually to better understand it. The user interface for Groove Agent 1 opens automatically. We could spend two hours just on this remarkable instrument, but to keep things moving along, let's simply load it up with sounds and keep going. To do this, click on the Preset window. I'm going to select the preset called Vinyl Kit, but you can see that hundreds are available. Close Groove Agent 1. And now we have a sound module loaded up with drum sounds. Next, we need a track of MIDI data to trigger those sounds. Open the project menu and select Add Track, then MIDI Track. Leave the count at 1 and click Add Track. A new MIDI track is added to the main project window. You'll notice that the MIDI track and the audio tracks have some subtle differences. They have different track icons and they have slightly different track controls, but they're more similar than different. Let's route this MIDI track to Groove Agent 1. Now click on the tab for MIDI inserts and select Beat Designer. This is the primary rhythm composer in Cubase. We'll look at how to use Beat Designer in detail later. For now, let's get it loaded. Click on the Preset Management icon and select Load Preset. And let's select Vinyl Groove 130 since these patterns line up well with the vinyl kit sounds already loaded in Groove Agent 1. At the bottom of Beat Designer, you see four pattern banks. If there's a dot, then that pattern bank has content already loaded. Below the pattern banks are subbanks laid out like a keyboard. Again, if there's a dot, then that subbank is loaded with patterns. To preview a pattern, click the corresponding key and press play. When 
When you find a pattern or sub-bank that you like, click this triangle and insert it into your project. Repeat this process until you've created a rhythm track you're happy with. Once your MIDI track is loaded with patterns, you can turn off Beat Designer so that it doesn't confuse matters by continuing to play in the background. Here's how our drum part sounds so far. Okay, let's add a piano part. We'll also do this using MIDI and VST instruments, but we're going to try another technique. Steinberg has created a feature called an instrument track, which is a MIDI track and a VST instrument bundled together. To create an instrument track, open the project menu, select Add Track and Instrument Track. When the dialog box opens, set the count to 1 so that we only create a single instrument track. Use the drop down menu under Instrument to select the VST instrument for this track. Let's pick Halion Sonic SE and click Add Track. Here again, you see a new track with a new track icon and slightly different track controls. Use the Edit Instrument icon to open Halion Sonic SE and select a preset. Select the instrument track, double-click on the name area, and rename it Piano. Do the same for track 3 and name it Drums. OK, let's lay down the piano part. Select the piano track, arm the Record Enable button, and activate the input monitor. I'll have the keyboard player play a few notes on the MIDI keyboard to make sure that he can hear all the tones in his headset and that all the connections are correct. Here we go. Pretty good. There were a few drop notes, but that's okay. MIDI is easy to edit. Double click on the MIDI performance in the project window to open the editor, known as the key editor. You'll see a matrix with MIDI notes. The pitches are shown by a note's vertical position, and its duration is represented by how long the line is. Its velocity, or volume, is shown both by its color and the graph at the bottom of the window. There's a piano keyboard shown vertically along the left margin. You can use the Key Editor toolbar to edit the performance. You can move notes, delete notes, add notes, and edit notes. And just like we saw with audio editing, this is only a small example of Cubase's power, but it'll do for now. Let's move on to Chapter 5 and take a look at EQ, Effects, and the basic mixdown procedure.